Hey everybody, Techie 101 here. How you guys doing? Luffy's got a new form for his Gear 4th, and you know what I got? I got a brand new webcam. Check it out. So uh, just let me know below on how you feel about the color balancing. I might have to change the settings up a bit for that, but I'm really excited. And to show you how excited I am, we're going to use uh, a very limited edition special ability kind of thing. You know, this is only unlockable one time, so don't blink, all right? This is a very special teching tumble! Yeah! I suggest do the rest of the video like this. Like I'm some teen girl from the mid 90s. Like, oh my God, did you hear that Luffy got a new form for his gear fourth? I heard it's called Snake Man. It's like totally tubular. I'm gonna text Gina about this. They didn't have texting in the 90s, Matt. All right, well, I've already alienated everybody new to this channel. You know, that poor son of a bitch scrolling through his recommended list and he's like, oh, hey, there's a guy talking about Luffy's new form. I'm gonna click on that and I'm doing all this nonsense. He clicked off like 20 seconds ago. But anyway, um, yeah, so Luffy's got a new form for his Gear 4. We'll be discussing that today. Have no idea what abilities it's going to sh uh, display because we haven't seen it yet. All we've seen was the eyes. Um, but a lot of people have, you know, talking about it, the theories, and really how Gear 4 works. Now that we have, like, three distinct forms we're going to see, of course, his default Gear 4 Bound Man, or Bounce Man, or however you want to translate that out. Uh, Gear 4 Tank Man, which he used against uh, Cracker, and now... Now, Snake Man, which will, you know, probably, you know, cement exactly how Gear Forth operates. And are there more forms beyond that? Who knows? But that's what we're here to discuss today. Right, so the first thing I should bring up is just give accolades on Luffy's part for the way he developed Gear 4th. I think it's a lot more uh, intuitive and interesting than his previous gear techniques. Now, don't get me wrong, Gear 2nd and Gear 3rd are pretty cool. I'm simply saying that he developed those techniques sort of on a short timetable. He got his ass kicked by Aokiji, and he realized I needed to come up with new ways to fight stronger opponents like the Admirals. So, it's implied, we don't really get to see Luffy training and trying to figure out these moves all too much, uh, but it's implied that during Water 7, Luffy was kind of throwing around the idea of, um, you know, gear second and gear third, and he had them ready to go by the time he arrived in Eni's lobby. Uh, however, with gear fourth, Luffy had a whole two years to refine that technique, and you can really see that, how he, um, how he has different forms depending on which enemy he fights against. I could totally imagine Luffy trying to come up as like, okay, I'm here, I'm training for two years, I'm learning hockey, I'm gonna come up with a new gear technique. And let's say gear fourth bound man was the first move, he's like, oh, okay, this is my new form. He didn't stop there. Maybe it was Rayleigh, or maybe he realized it himself. Hey, having one new form is cool, but I need to kind of uh, modify this a little bit, because I might fight against enemies that have certain specialties. I should kind of, you know, make different forms for Gear 4, uh, you know, adding, you know, extra muscle mass and extra hockey onto it so I can fight various opponents. Maybe I should have a form catered more for attacking. I should have another one for defense. I should have another one for speed and evasion, that sort of thing. So I just really like the way that Gear 4 is shaping up so far. And so we know three forms already. We know Bound Man, which is sort of like the default he used against Doflamingo. That was the first form he used. And then he had Gear 4 of Tank Man, which he used against Cracker. Uh, we only saw the full version version. And now we have, of course, Gear 4 of Snake Man, which we've yet to see in its entirety. We only got to see the Eye of Hype, as I call it, from the last chapter. So, um, and, and there's no break next week. Thankfully, Oda did not give us that kind of torture. It's like, Gear 4 of Snake Man, One Piece is on a break. We'll be back in two weeks, guys. No, it's the next week. We're going to see it in all of its snaky, slivery glory, all right? So, uh, Draco Malfoy would be very very happy. All right, so let's go into a bunch of different theories regarding this now. So the first theory I've been seeing a lot is the one type of hockey specialty for each gear fourth form. Okay, with Bound Man sort of operating as a neutral or like a default or like the most balanced, okay? So you have Bound Man, that's like his default, he goes into that just to, you know, gauge the enemy and where he's at. Although, to be fair, I don't know if he can switch between the forms, you know, just casually. Like, if Luffy's in Gear 4 Bound Man, I don't know if he could just be like, okay, I want to be in Snake Man now, and then just switch over with no problems whatsoever. We haven't really seen how that operated yet. Because I think when he fought against Cracker, uh, didn't he go into Gear 4 against against Cracker first, and then, you know, he, he couldn't finish the fight in Gear 4 Bound Man, so, because the fight waged, like, raged on for, like, 10 hours or something, where Luffy was just devouring Cracker after Cracker, so he went Gear 4 Bound Man, that didn't work, he deflated back to normal, started gorging himself on Crackers all night, and then later on went into Gear 4 Tank Man, 
So I don't think he could switch between them. I think whenever he transforms into one particular form, he's locked in. But Gear 4th Bound Man is sort of the balance. And then Gear 4th Tank Man is the form that's going to be focused on armament hockey because he's like much larger. And keep in mind, we haven't seen the based version of Tank Man. We've only seen the uh, full version when kind of a situational move whenever Luffy ate a lot of food. He's like, okay, I'm going to go into Tank Man, but I'm a little bit larger than normal Tank Man. So I'm going to like, like when Luffy came up with the technique on Ruskina, I'm sure he didn't look like this. Probably a little bit more compact on Ruskina, and then when he ate the crackers, he just worked with it, you know, worked with what he had. Um, so that's going to be his armament hockey type gear forth move. And then Snake Man, which is what we're going to see now, is of course going to be his observation hockey focus, because of course uh, Katakuri is the one that's the most adept at observation hockey, and this whole fight has pretty much been discussing more about observation hockey, how it operates, Rayleigh teaching him about it, all the flashbacks we've gotten. So that makes sense. And of course, that leaves one more addition form that we've yet to see um, that takes advantage of Luffy's Conqueror's Hockey, alright? So that's that's one theory people are throwing out there. So let me just tell you right away, I do like this idea. Um, the only problems I have with it really is that we haven't really gotten to see Tank Man in its normal version and how that really operates, uh, but if you're going to say Tank Man is going to be the one that's going to be most focused around armament, that makes sense given that it's called Tank Man. Uh, so maybe Luffy can't move around very much, maybe he just increases his muscle mass even further than normal gear fourth bound man and he just kind of like is locked in place he can't move uh, but he's very resistant to attacks um, by the way with this theory it seems to imply that like every single form that Luffy goes into in gear fourth he just raises his current level of that hockey to its maximum while kind of lowering the others with bound man sort of operating as a balance so Luffy's you know armament hockey in gear fourth bound man was very strong you know uh, Doflamingo wasn't able to break through it it still retained his elasticity and of course when he was using moves like Python or Culverian, uh, he was able to manipulate them and control them at will using hockey and directing them using observation. Sort of like a balance there. Tank man, armament all the way to the maximum, and then observation and conquerors are kind of low down to the bottom. Now, we don't really know every little thing about hockey and how it operates, but from the way it's stated when Luffy went into Bound Man against Doflamingo, from the way Law was talking about it, it is possible for you to exhaust your hockey to a point. So, Luffy probably couldn't go, you know, max observation, max max armament, max conquerors, and all maintained at the same time. Probably wouldn't go down like that. Uh, if he could do something like that, it would probably drain him almost immediately. Um, and now, of course, we have Gear 4 of Snake Man, which would be the observation one that's centric. Um, and this also might help explain why Luffy didn't use this move up until now. Keep in mind, he's been fighting Katakuri for something like 12 hours. Well, if he already had a move that was capable of, you know, maxing out his observation hockey to the point where it was at, um, and it was like a, a speed or evasive based form. Why didn't he use that uh, right after he used Gear 4 the first time and it didn't work against Katakuri? Well, he got a hit off on Katakuri, but it didn't last very long. Uh, he should have retreated with Brule, recovered his hockey, and then went right into Snake Man. Why didn't he do that? I think it's because Luffy realized that even in Snake Man, something that's focused on observation, his current level of observation was still not good enough. Keep this in mind. It's very important to understand this. It's not like Luffy, you know, momentarily breaks through hockey barriers when he goes into his gear. Like, let's say Gear 4 of Tank Man really is something completely focused around armament. Whenever he goes into that, it's not like Luffy achieves armament hockey skill that he didn't have before that. He just kind of maxes out where he was at and then sacrifices the other ones in, in, in the process, okay? So, yeah, Luffy had Snake Man when he was fighting Katakuri, but, and it, it does, is the one that's, you know, focused on observation, but his observation, even at his best, was not good enough to take on Katakuri's best. So he had to fight Katakuri and just, like, an old slobber knocker for, like, half a day, really understanding how observation worked, how Katakuri Curry was using it, um, just getting beat down over and over again, getting his face grinded by these these spiked spurs that Katakuri had on until he finally realized right here at the end of the battle, he's like, okay, you know, I think I've learned enough hockey from you observation-wise. I think Gear 4 of Snake Man, now that it focuses on observation, I think that'll be good enough to take you down. Or, another way of looking at this is, like, Luffy's like, I'm out of time. Uh, I have to meet up with everybody in less than an hour. Uh, it's not, it's now or nothing. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough observation hockey skill in order to take down Katakuri, but I, I held out for as long as I could. Um, and, you know, in Gear 4, it's not something he can just use, you know, repeatedly right after another. It seems like his time frame using it is getting 
getting longer and longer, but he can't bust it out one after another. So uh, it's important to mention that. It might just be, I'm up against a wall. I got to use it now. So I like that theory. I think uh, when we do see Snake Man next week, that'll probably cement it right there. Uh, if it's something that's completely focused on observation, I think then we can have a general idea like, okay, Tank Man is for armament. Snake Man is for observation. And then that, of course, leaves the door open for another Gear 4 form, like the last one that's going to be called, uh, well, I don't know, Lion Man or something, because the lion is the king of the jungle and Conqueror's Hockey is, of course, the last form of hockey that you would have to uh, encapsulate in a Gear 4 form. And you also have to understand, like, how many forms of Gear 4 he's actually going to have. I, I think I think four distinct forms, Bound Man, Snake Man, Tank Man, and then let's just call it Lion Man or King Man or whatever, um, really do feel like I'm playing Mega Man again. Just I made that reference in the video, I'm just saying, okay? Um, you know, and, and, and I think uh, after this week we'll understand that in its full view. So that's one theory. Another one I've seen, and this doesn't really have anything to do with Luffy's hockey or anything like that, but just how, like, the naming scheme of Gear 4, how how it works. Um, the general idea is Luffy has like one big just kind of screw off move in every single form that he's used to take down those giant animals on Ruskina. Remember, right after we got back from the time skip, we see Luffy hanging out there and we see a giant gorilla, we see a giant lion, and we see a giant uh, alligator. I believe in the anime there was also a giant tiger and also remember back uh, before the time skip there was that giant elephant that was also on Ruskina. So Ruskina is a very dangerous island filled with a bunch of wild animals that are just like, you know, kaiju size, okay? So what techniques did Luffy use to take down those things and tame them and become the boss of that entire island? All right. Well, I think it's pretty obvious, and we've gotten hints through this. Whenever Luffy used Kong Gun against Doflamingo, um, it didn't work. And then Luffy has a flashback to when he was training with Rayleigh, and Rayleigh stated, uh, well, Luffy brought up to him, is like, I used Kong Gun against that enemy, we're assuming it was the giant gorilla. I used regular Kong gun against that uh, gorilla, and it didn't do crap. And Rayleigh's like, okay, well, you gotta figure out something else to do. And then that's when Luffy came up with King Kong gun, which is just, all right, instead of just uh, inflating my muscles a little and hitting him with Kong gun, I'll inflate my muscles a lot and then hit him with King Kong gun. And Rayleigh's just like, that, that's gonna be even harder on your, okay, fine, kid, you just do whatever. So we assume that the King Kong gun, the technique that just, body Doflamingo and wrecked an entire city and, you know, completely separate, cut it in half. That was the freaking move that he used to take down the King Kong giant gorilla thing on Ruskina, all right? He also has another technique called the Leo Bazooka, or the Leo Rex Bazooka, which we can assume that's the move he used to take down the giant lion. Um, as for a giant snake, we haven't really seen that on Ruskina. I mean, I'm not doubting that there probably was. I mean, it was an island full of giant animals to begin with. Probably was a giant snake somewhere. Also, you got to consider the Kuja. They were some sort of an inspiration for Luffy at this point. Um, maybe Luffy was like to Boa Hancock. He's like, all right, I'm not going to marry you, but I'll name a technique after you. And then Boa Hancock, of course, being in her, you know, massive fangirling for Luffy would be like, yes, that's the same as marriage, right? Is like, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Boa. Fine. Um, so maybe not exactly like that, but maybe it was an inspiration taken from the Kuja's abilities and their snake companions and all that stuff. Luffy did fight against two of Boa's sisters in the Coliseum there on Amazon Lily that used snake-like uh, devil fruits and, you know, attacks to take him down. So maybe L Luffy took some inspirations from those, uh, the Boa sisters siblings and their devil fruits in order to incorporate it into Snake Man. Um, something along those lines there. Uh, did he use a technique against... I don't think he used a technique named after a tiger yet, so we'll, we're going to see. Uh, needless to say, Oda's whole... And oh, then he had Elephant Gun, which is probably what he used to take down the giant elephant, but that's not even a gear fourth form. That's, uh, that's a gear third form. But you also have to keep in mind, Oda was probably just running out of weapon, you know, names, so he's just like, alright, so after the time skip, I'm gonna start incorporating like animal names, like Rhino Schneider and Elephant Gun and Leo Bazooka and Kong Gun. That's what he was doing, just to, like new naming scheme for Luffy's moves. Like whenever he goes into Gear Second, he you know he uses hockey. It's always Hawk Gatling or something along those like Red Hawk, you know that kind of thing. Adding animal names, it makes it sound cooler. So that might just be the reason for that. And remember, Luffy's had other moves uh, that have snake or reference snakes in some way that don't involve Gear Four of Snake Man, because this is the first time we're seeing Snake Man. Luffy used uh, Gumu. 
Gum Uno Snake Shot against Hody Jones, and he's also used when he was in Gear 4, uh, his Culverian, or his Python. So, you know, I I'm assuming they're all Gear 4. Luffy could probably use Culverian while he's in Snake Man, maybe more effectual there. Um, you know, and, and, and maybe Snake Shot might make an appearance in, in his Gear 4 form. Maybe he was just taking Snake Shot and using it against Hody. Um, don't really know the whole point of that. I think it's the whole idea of is just like an invasive attack that your opponent can't really see coming or can't block very well, and then it just kind of latches onto you like a grappling hook, that kind of thing, but if you hockey up your fingertips, it can like dig into your flesh. I think that's what Snake Shot was all about. So, you know, Luffy's definitely taking inspiration from the Kuja, from just the naming scheme of these attacks, and we're probably going to get to see similar moves when he goes into Gear 4 of Snake Man. Okay. Right, so now let's talk about the actual appearance of what Gear 4 uh, Snake Man is going to look like. So what I think is going to happen is it's going to compress his muscles down into a lot more of like a compact form than what we've seen with the other Gear 4th forms. Keep in mind, Gear 4th is still an ability that focuses around Muscle Balloon increasing Luffy's muscular system. Uh, the same way that Gear 2nd is his circulatory system with his blood, and then Gear 3rd is of course his uh, skeletal system with his bones. So muscles are still going to play a role here, but when he used Bound Man, giant, you know, bulbous muscles. When he uses Tank Man, even larger muscles. So I'm going to think with Snake Man, because snakes are of course, you know, more, uh, you know, smaller and more, you know, thin and they can maneuver a lot easier and everything like that, better control over their muscles, Luffy's body is going to thin down quite a bit. Um, it's probably going to look rather ridiculous. I could see Luffy probably, because Katakuri is already pretty tall. Katakuri is like something like, uh, like 16, 17 feet tall. So if like Luffy compresses all of his muscles down, he's like this, just like 30 foot kind of like squirming Luffy. Maybe he can't stand very well. Remember back when he's using Gear 4th Bound Man, he can't walk at all. He has to bounce like a ball. Tank Man sort of locks him into one place where he really can't move so the idea that he goes into snake man and he's just kind of like this he it's like a snake you use your muscles to maneuver around you don't use snakes don't have legs so they got to maneuver around that way and so you know it, it's gonna look weird okay oda's drawing style i remember when bound man first showed up a lot of people didn't like its design all right Hell, I remember when Frankie first showed up after the time skip, and a lot of people were put off on his design, but you warm up to it, okay? It just, you gotta get used to Oda's style, alright? Um, Luffy might, he, he might add another gear later, like, this is fifth gear, or this is final gear, and it's gonna be like this, okay, now I'm gonna give them the really badass, turn Luffy into a freaking Super Saiyan from Dragon Ball kind of appearance, but for right now, let's keep with the wacky animal themes, you know? So, uh, while Luffy's in this form, Observation Hockey is, of course, going to be his main asset Set. Not only for dodging abilities, being very evasive, he can move his bodies and contort them in ways not even imaginable probably up to this point. Much more malleability for the rubber. Um, but also, he's going to be able to probably move a lot faster, too. Uh, with all of his muscles compressed down, he's going to be able to probably shoot around the mirror world, maybe like a like a rubber band. You let the rubber band f uh, fly free, and he just bounces all over the place. In fact, if his body's really elongated, I could totally see a scene where he's going after Katakuri, and like while Luffy's face is approaching him, and Katakuri he's getting ready, Luffy could like snake an arm or a leg around behind Katakuri and he's like, okay, here comes Luffy, I'm gonna brace my paw, and then he gets hit in the back or something like that, because Luffy can like spread out his body, he can own the battlefield with that kind of appearance. I know we've seen kind of other forms, like people have been drawing some fan art of him, looks kind of goofy, uh, but I really think that's the best way to look at it. It's gonna, it is gonna look goofy, but it's gonna, you know, elongate his body, he's gonna be very spread out, gonna be very tall if he was gonna like stand up, but he's probably honestly gonna rely on the way snakes move, laying on the ground and just kind of moving around that way, and he'll probably, not, not like Luffy's gonna be stuck on the floor the entire time like a carpet, he'll be able to raise up his body and everything like that, I'm just saying he probably won't be able to use his legs to stand, is same thing with with Bound Man having to bounce around like a ball. So that's basically the best idea I have for Snake Man right now. Um, I don't think there's going to be anything involving like actual snakes like Venom or anything like that. Like that's just the name of the move, obviously. Although Luffy might like, because he's Luffy, might like try to bite Katakuri or something like that just for the appearance alone. You know, like, well, I look like a snake, so ergo, I need to bite somebody. Um, but uh, that's basically all the ideas I have for Gear 4th or the theories I'm discussing and everything like that. Let me know what you feel below about how this is going to like change the battle with Katakuri, what it's going to look like, um, you know, which theories so far you've seen. Maybe none of the theories so far suit your need. You came up with your own. Let me know below. Thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Woo! Snake Man! Sounds like a really lame 1950s superhero. <laughs>